All right, folks, welcome back to another episode of Up in the Air. Stream. And in this episode, we are going to be doing an install, um, not a install video, but just an install and things to consider video uh, for the Micro Air Easy Touch RV. Now, this is the 350 version, and it's the black version. So you'll see more of it as I open up and kind of lay everything out to you. But real quick, I want to basically discuss sort of the reason why I put this off uh, as long as I did and then actually what has um, made me decide to go ahead and invest the money in it. Um, it's a nice product. You see a lot of folks doing videos about it and uh, a lot of people like it. So it's a well proven product. Um, it doesn't really need any further review in that regard because there's really nobody that's complaining about it in that regard. And what it is replacing is the Dometic um, thermostat here, which is uh, kind of basic. It has a digital display, it gives you temperature, it gives you, um, you know, what you have things set at and the fan and all that good stuff runs the heat pump. And so, you know, pretty much everybody's familiar with what this is and also you probably either have one or have something similar to it and that's why you've navigated to this um, the video but in the coming weeks let me sit here for a little bit and uh, just basically bore you with just uh, some still video but in the coming weeks I will be showing you the Hughes auto transformer install along with the watchdog and how we mount it all behind this panel down here, the power converter um, and the power distribution box. So that is coming. And uh, the reason why we are doing all of that is because of the fact that we had, as discussed in previous videos, stayed at a campground that we normally stay at and it did have low line voltage and the, the Airstream kept on shutting off. Okay, so um, the problem with that is, is we leave sometimes for a couple hours um, and it does not take long for an Airstream to heat up. We have no current method other than hooking up maybe our video on our ring camera and with the internet of being notified if or able to check in on is more the thing on what the temperature currently is in the Airstream. So if our dog was in here or your cat or your pet, whatever it might be, and the airstream goes the airstream ac goes out um, it can get dangerous real quick for them so that is why uh, i've chose to get this this unit here um, now instead of later and and actually i thought i probably would may, maybe never buy it but uh with that recent event it has motivated me to do so and then also uh, like i said we'll be showing you the auto transformer um, we also have some other videos coming up that's kind of exciting as far as the new Hughes Auto Transformer watchdog that has Wi-Fi also. And so we'll be doing an extensive review on the Generation 2 in case you have not been um, paying attention. They recently just came out with that, like literally today, depending on when you are watching this video in uh, July of 2024. They just came out with it literally today. So uh, that is also part of of you know what's coming up for us so with all that being said and kind of being redundant let me go ahead and get this box open i'll kind of show you what everything that it comes with all right so here is the contents of the box emptied out um, and there's a lot of great install videos on how to install this unit um, i'm not going to show you that it's more of an awareness this is more of you know a decision making video uh, we did buy it from Hutch Mountain, uh, which is located in um, Utah, I believe, and they uh, they have a great price on this. Uh, and if you use changing lanes as a uh, coupon code, you'll even get a little bit. You'll get ten percent off of it as well. So um, look at the changing lanes video if you want some more detailed install video. Um, comes with like a little uh, card here that tells you the different icons. The unit itself which it says it's made in the usa so that's kind of impressive um, this will be a little bit different on the back than maybe yours if you have a different type um, they have a really good program uh, that allows you to select exactly which one that you need by selecting which brand of ac unit that you have and then one thing to keep in mind here as well is um, these screws here are basically to cover up the screw holes 
that the Dometic um, uh, thermostat there uses and uh, you won't be needing those holes any longer as this is much narrower I kind of I'll put it up there just to kind of show you the difference in size uh, it's 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 narrower than the uh, not as wide as the original unit so there's gonna be a couple holes that are exposed I went ahead on Amazon I don't have any links for you because you're gonna have to pick whatever color your wall is and I bought some brown ones um, that is the kind of the disappointing thing about this install kit is uh, it would be nice if they would give you like some some white ones and some in maybe this color and then also some brown ones and maybe a black set just in case you know whatever it is that you have that you want to install on your wall it'd give you a little bit more versatility so I went ahead and ordered for five dollars and I recommend that um, I'm not gonna be using the screws here uh, they make they make a really cool little kit though with all that being said and kind of dinging them on their uh, screw cover up selection uh, they make this little kit here that's kind of slick where you can actually drill your additional hole in this this thing uh, that you break it away and you'll see that in the install videos um, and it just has some basic instructions in there on how to do that um, I'm not going to do that I'm actually going to use um, this command strip here these two command strips um, they don't come with command strips so just keep that in mind but those are just going to go directly on the back here and uh, they will do a very sufficient job of keeping this unit on the wall as it's not very heavy at all so um, that is how we are going to mount this unit up on the wall so um, I am seeing yeah I don't think it's gonna affect how it measures temperature I think that, you know look at the vents here top and bottom so if anybody's worried about you know covering up these holes in the back that's that's not a concern at all and then I am going to utilize a uh, measuring device here so that I'm measuring don't don't use a level uh, <laughs> it's just not gonna be accurate enough because you may not have your unit level and you know so you're gonna want to measure basically from like a reference point which I'm gonna use um, that opening there where all the chargers go for my reference point so that it, even if that's not level or they didn't cut it correctly at the factory it's gonna look as close as possible and I'm actually looking at that the medic mount and it looks to me it looks like it runs downhill a little bit now that I'm actually paying attention to it so um, yeah that's just my eye you know kind of catching that detail so all right let's get to it and then we'll talk about anything that of concern and I'll show you what it looks like um, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to utilize our EU2000 or correction EU3200i, the new uh, Honda generator. So that's going to be in the video here shortly as well as I show you how well that actually runs the AC. Um, and then while I'm thinking about it, let me talk about one other item um, with that Micro Air does make. And, you know, like I said, Micro Air is the, the um, brand here. They also make the. Um, easy start i'm going to pop it up on the screen so you can see the product that i had installed last year into our ac unit and i when we were getting that low line voltage i also and i'm going to pop up like a screenshot of like the app um especially when the unit is up there running so i can show you how that app works and this isn't like this isn't basically a review of the micro air easy start because there's plenty of good videos about that but I do want to say that one item that I was not aware of um, with the Easy Start uh, made by Micro Air was that it actually has some protection that specifically addresses low line voltage. And I'm like all about this, like educating myself on this low line voltage. And that's kind of the reason why I'm doing this video as well. And the videos that will follow this video is because I think it's something that a lot of people overlook. I kind of thought that I really was like paying attention and doing everything that I possibly could be doing to protect the Airstream and man, I was not paying attention. So um, that MicroStart also will protect and I'm going to, I'm going to bring up an overlay like right now, um, kind of a reminder for me to do so uh, by saying that, uh, that shows like the features and where they make mention of the fact that you are protecting your um, your AC unit from low line voltage as well with that easy start. And I mean, I knew that it, that it, that it did protect it, meaning like it made it the compressor easier to start. 
and maybe that's the extent of the protection that they're talking about. I, but I think it actually specifically looks for low line voltage and, and actually kind of acts as a as a buffer to that as well. So, all right, uh, back to the thermostat. Okay, so I was watching the uh, Air Gear video, which is another really great resource for an install video of this. Um, and you know, you're just kind of picking up extra stuff by, I guess, watching my video. Um, but uh, I, I did use my uh, Alfna, uh, you know, grid here. You can get these on Alpha. You can get these on uh, Amazon. They're just really handy to have when you're making installations. And I paralleled it uh, with that opening and then checked the edge here and it was all square. So good job on, on Airstream for, for that. I would, I would hope this is probably all cut by a computer. But um, so one of the things that you got to keep in mind is like you're not reusing these screws here, these screw holes. You're actually making new screw holes, but it is going to use that bridge across there to get my second one on that line so I'm not I haven't marked that you're gonna want to hold your unit up there to make sure that these two screws are covered and that your hole is covered and then that way you know where to position it um, or you're gonna it's not gonna look very nice uh, it's bad enough that you know I'm gonna have these two uh, button head screw covers over there um, but I'll show you how that turned out with the brown ones and it is what it is I mean you're not gonna get around that so you know um, and like I said, you use the, uh, the uh, 7 64th screw. Uh, you're not going to use the anchors, so we're not, we're not going in the drywall or anything else like that, or like a composite. We're actually going in the wood, so we're just going to use just the screws itself. So, all right. All right, there should be. Um, keep your original black screws over there, uh, just in case you can use them with whatever colored buttons. Uh, covered, you know, screw covers that you end up ordering off of Amazon, so that way you can just reuse those screws. Um, I have the power off currently. I'm going to see if I can program this before I put the AC back, just to kind of keep things um, maybe a little bit safer. If um, it may not let me, well, yeah, I think it will. And um, one other little tip is when you do cut off or snap off, they say snap off, but cut off those little that bridge uh, part that goes between it. Give all your screws like a quarter of a turn so that the little scrap or the little tabs are not on the circular part of where you push this on because you're going to fight it uh, most likely if you if you had like a tight tolerance between the two um, then you're going to fight it a little bit but if you put it up and down or actually put it uh, up so that it will keyhole um, no actually put it down I'm sorry put put the little piece down so that a keyhole into the the back side of this plate if that makes sense to you all right I want to show you guys something here and I'm not gonna leave it like this for very long um, so this is the Hughes auto formers uh, voltage meter that you can plug into one of your outlets and it's at 107 okay you do not want to run your equipment with less than uh, 114 generally speaking um, so that's that's not good so I'm gonna shut this down but it is working fine the thermostats working fine I'm gonna get the generator going and uh, we'll see what the line voltage is there it's gonna be perfect I'm sure of that uh, even with running it but uh, our barn is out a little ways from the house and so that's probably why our voltage is the way it is it's probably really kind of maxing it out I've only been running this for like five minutes now just kind of testing the waters um, I would never had really run the AC out here in the barn and I wanted to see if it could be done, and the answer is no, it should not be done. And uh, I kind of knew that the electric that I ran out here was limited, uh, but I, I didn't know that it was gonna be quite that bad. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and shut that down. Um, if I would have had the Hughes Autoformer watchdog plugged in, it would actually shut it off at 104. And uh, this is actually higher than what we had at the campsite that we were at recently. So, uh, but it's still not a good idea to ever run it that low. And like I said, I'm gonna be much more aware of it. Um, so the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up the micro air to our Wi-Fi device. And our Wi-Fi device battery was kind of dead. So I'm just waiting for it to charge up as well. Uh, so let me get the EU2000 air. I keep on wanting to say EU2000 because I used to own an EU2000, the new, EU3200i and like and get it up running and if you've never seen it I actually did a video about it but 
Um, I've never actually ran it with this Airstream ever. We've never had to, so I've uh, just done the maintenance and ran it occasionally. So it's gonna get a little exercise today, which is a good thing. All right, I wanted to share with you something real quick. Um, man, I am impressed with this thing. Like, the app is, is really nice, and it's very responsive uh, via Bluetooth. I'm not quite sure, you know, obviously there's gonna be a delay with Wi-Fi depending on your signal and whatnot, but as far as like actually sitting in the rig and then using, um, the Bluetooth function on the app, it is working extremely good. Now what I did was, um, before I get this EU3200i, the Honda generator set up, I put it on fan only and I put it on fan high only. Um, it's real easy to do that. I hit a screenshot of it, so I'll try to make sure and include that. But as you can see, my line voltage has come back up to 118, which is fully acceptable. Like I said, 114 and above is uh, 114 should be your, your minimum goal uh, always. Um, and like I said, protection kicks in at anything less than 104 on the watchdog. Um, so yeah, so I can live with that. I can, I can run the AC fan only. And uh, that is the beauty of having this uh, little unit here. It's so, so helpful just to have a quick glance. You know, you come in your unit, you take a peek there and you just know that you're in good shape still as far as what your your uh, air service is running off of. All right, I'm gonna speak up a little bit so you can hear me over the, the generator. Um, so the EU3200i is Honda's latest version of a inverter generator and it's fuel injected. It has Wi-Fi, uh, actually Bluetooth connectivity like a lot of the modern generators have these days and uh, go ahead and walk away a little bit it is not as quiet as like the EU 2000s or even I had a an EU 3000 and that thing would just purr uh, so I kind of forget sometimes you know that it is a little bit louder but as you can see though it is a suitcase style generator and it is not that heavy for me to manhandle it and it's well balanced and it's it's really it's really nice uh, so I've been super impressed with it uh, haven't really used it, uh, but as far as its capability, and so uh, I, I do, a lot of people have had a really good luck. Now this would kind of be simulating like a mooch dock situation where this is a 12 gauge heavy duty uh, rigid brand cord here. Um, so, you know, it's better than a 14 gauge, obviously, and it, it's a high quality 12 gauge at that. So not everything is created equal. It's very very flexible, which makes you believe that it's probably a, a pretty high strand copper, you know, wire in there, and it has rigid brand name on it. Uh, but this would be going, like I said, this would be kind of simulating if we went to a friend's house, if we could expect to be able to run the AC. And uh, so we have the smart plug, uh, converter plug that goes down into your regular three wire. Uh, you know, 15, 20 amp type connection. And uh, the uh, the outlet there on the EU3200i is a 20 gauge outlet. And I have a bonding plug coming from Hughes Transformers as well. And I'll, sh I'll show you guys that later because that's one of the things I'm gonna show in this upcoming Hughes Autoformer uh, video. And so there's gonna be a lot of information to share with you guys there. And I may even make a, a two videos just to kind of show different aspects of all the information but you know as a reminder the micro air easy start like I said it does have features uh, that does protect the compressor on the AC unit from from uh, line you know low line voltage uh, but the real secret of it or the real advantage I guess the benefit the real reason why I wanted it was to be able to do something like this with the generator so it's kind of surprising that I'm just now really getting around to um, actually putting this to the test, uh, but it definitely is the time to do it now. Um, if I would have had this generator with us at the campground that we were recently at, we would not have had to leave. But unfortunately, it was uh, 90 degrees out and higher, and uh, we were we were pretty hot, so we ended up leaving, and uh, that was unfortunate. But uh, uh, I may have mentioned in a, another video we actually left and went up up north and uh, to Cedar Point and camped up there so that was nice okay so now we have the AC unit is running but it's in fan only 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, figure this out. I could do it on my on the app really easily, but I'm recording with my phone. So let's see here. If I touch this, that's the fan. I think if I touch this right here, yep. Now I can change this, and I think you guys can see this pretty good. There's all kinds of different settings. This this unit does have a heat pump, so I could actually turn it into a heat pump. Uh, but let's try cool. Let's see what this, uh, well, hold on a second. Let's see what our line voltage is over here. Wow, okay, so our, our inverter generator is at 125, all right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the video and I'm gonna show you, um, I'm going to stop the video now and I'm going to connect it to the generator. I'm going to capture a screenshot of what the load is currently of the generator and then we'll see where the generator is after I start the actual AC compressor that will be in cooling mode. Okay, so I screenshotted the load on the generator with just basically the batteries charging because they were depleted a little bit. Um, so they are like in a bulk mode, charge mode right now because I had the... Uh, AC unit unplugged, or I had the shore power unplugged just so I wouldn't have any AC power going to the uh, the AC unit while I was doing all this thermostat work. I probably should have connect disconnected the battery too, just to be on the safe side. But it, it's a you know it's a it's an Ethernet plug, so I mean there's really low risk of anything going wrong. So let's get this going. We'll hit this button right here, and it, there is a little bit of delay, so it's not like your iPhone or something like that. You know, it's older technology. That we're using here as far as this touch screen but it's still it's still very good okay so that's I'm a little nervous so let's hit that cool button and let's hit fan to auto no let's hit it to let's go ahead and give it all give it manual high it's, there it goes okay now it's so now it is I heard the compressor kick. So now it is uh, running the AC unit in cool mode. Let's see what our line voltage went down to. Uh, it's it's maintaining at 125. I'm not quite sure, I guess, if the compressor did kick on. I, I think it did. It's showing, uh, it's showing cool. Oh, I think it, it might have just kicked in right then. I heard the generator make a different noise. So, all right, I'm gonna stop the video and I'm gonna give you a screenshot of the um, of the generator running. We can go out here and maybe you'll hear a different sound as far as the generator, how it's running. It does seem to be tasked more. So, I bet you anything, if, when I give you this screenshot, you're gonna see that the uh, demand is up higher and also the RPM is up higher. All right, so I've been letting it run for a little bit now, and uh, it's just burning along. Uh, it will tell you like if there's excessive current, and uh, I did have that happen before because I, you know, you always want to push the boundaries um, with you know different things. I wanted to see if it would actually run like the two AC units. I think on our friends that was parked here one time with their airstream. I forget. I forget what we were doing. I don't know why I would try that, but it did detect like high voltage. Um, and I think they had easy starts, but I'm not sure if they did or not. Maybe that's what it was. Um, but they were able to run their AC, and that's that's the bulk of the hours that I have on this unit. Is is uh, we were running running their uh, their AC for them while they were here. Um, I I not to kind of bore you with all these details, but I had a feeling that our line voltage uh, from the barn here um, would not be sufficient to really run an AC unit and I'm glad I, I actually let them use the generator instead uh, because I would have felt bad if something would have happened to their to their actual unit and they, and they may have been inside they may have monitored it and actually caught it you know they're full timers so they may have actually caught it and went wow that's not going to work you know what I mean and that's kind of what all this is about is just basically, um, you know, awareness, learning. Uh, I mean, it, it does, this barn does plenty with the electric that we have. It's, I don't really run any tools. It's just out here to, to keep the FJ charged, to keep the Armada charged. Um, for some of you that maybe have never seen it, I, I have surge protectors, these trip light surge protectors, and also uh, Victron Energy battery 
minor for the, um, it's a smart battery, a, a blue smart charger, so I can actually monitor the voltage here on the Armada as well. So I think that's about all I wanted to show you. I think it's been a, a really good test. I'm excited about the micro air thermostat and uh, how it's working and the connectivity and the ability for us to uh, monitor the temperature or change it or, or any of that stuff. And then kind of now knowing that uh, this is gonna work good as far as mooch docking goes, if we need to pull in somewhere unexpectedly and plug into somebody's uh, 15 amp circuit, um, you know, it, it should it should work. You know, I mean, as long as their electric is is halfway decent at their house and uh, in pretty good shape, a 200 amp service or something like that. So, all right. Well, I hope this uh, video has been helpful to you, and uh, make sure to subscribe by hitting that subscribe button, and also hit that bell for be notified when I do come out with these next videos of the auto, uh, the Hughes Auto Former being installed in that space along with the watchdog and then uh, actually showing you uh, a generation two uh, version of the non-EPO that I'm going to have on the pedestal. So I'll have graphics. It, 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 it makes sense when I show it to you. There's a, there's a lot of information, but it, it makes sense. So I hope this gave you a little bit of a different perspective of how all these things kind of work together and on maybe your strategy as far as how you install them and invest in them because none of it's cheap. So Thanks for watching. Take care, be safe, have fun.